Hello everybody, my name is Mo Falk and today I will show you five tips to make you super quick when working in FL Studio. We're gonna talk about hotkeys, structure, how to use buses, how not to kill your CPU and also some patcher stuff. Let's go. When we talk about hotkeys in FL Studio, I usually mean the very default hotkeys that are already implemented in the software and they will just make you very fast, they will make you declutter your workflow and will just make you more at ease when you're working in FL Studio. Let's start off with some very basic ones. The very basic ones are obviously when you have an audio clip or anything really, shift to duplicate. Easy. Next one is alt. You can hold alt and drag a clip without it clipping to whatever magnet you have set up. Now if you have it set to line, which I really like, you know it will snap to the nearest line, holding alt Bam, very basic. The last really easy one you should be using is mouse wheel click. Now you can hold your mouse wheel down, like clicking it, and then you can drag your playlist. Very basic, I hope you're all doing this because why wouldn't you? This is like the easiest way to get around in new sessions. You can also drag with the mouse wheel up here and it will like uh, zoom in and zoom out. I really like that as well. So now let's get into some more difficult hotkeys. I will show you how to use the slice tool properly. With the paintbrush selected in the playlist, you can click Alt Command and right shift. It's the right side shift on your keyboard. And when you do that and left click on anything, you get a free slice tool. How amazing is that? No more clicking up here, picking the slice tool, dragging, going back to thing. No, no, none of that, none of that. Another really cool hotkey with Alt Command is just holding it down, left clicking will mute or unmute. Now, how sick is that? You just bam, 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 bam. I don't want this, I don't want that. No more going up here, muting, na, na, na. It's the paintbrush. Paintbrush is the best. And lastly, this one I use all the time. It just makes you super, super quick at previewing little audio clips or whatever you want to preview. I also use it a lot in the piano roll, is you can just hold the left alt and right click. Pretty sick, huh? And for example, I use this in piano roll to check out my chords. Now, instead of going through the chords like this, right, and me changing that last note, I can just do, perfect. You know, what else do you need? Let's move on to structure. Now with structure, I don't mean arrangement structure. I actually mean the structure of how you arrange your FLP itself. Now in my sessions, I usually have it set up in a way where I have my playlist very big on the right side, I have my mixer accessible down here, and I have my patterns up here. Now I'm using the biggest part of my screen and I only have this little chunk down here, which I'm not using. And this just makes me feel like I can see everything. It doesn't feel too clustered. Everything has its own place. The cool thing with this arrangement of parts is that I can, if I'm in the playlist, click on the patterns up here, bam, I'm in the patterns. I can click on a mixer, bam, I bring up the mixer. I want to go back to patterns, boom. I want to go back to playlist, boom. Very, very fast, very easy, and it doesn't clutter up your screen. Like, imagine you had everything like this, right? And you're, oh, now I want to go to the playlist, boom, but now I want the patterns back. Where are my patterns? Then you need to go up there, you need to click on the patterns, you need to bring them back, you need to click on the mixer, you know? So that's why I have it set up like this because it just works so well. And it also makes me super, super fast. The next thing I will recommend for you is use buses the right way. Don't use them all the time. Don't use them for everything. Don't use them in your templates. Just make them when you need them, please. If you're using layers for a lead, for example, that makes sense to route to a bus to have multiband compression on or something like that. Maybe even a reverb bus. But it doesn't make sense to have an individual bus for percussions, symbols, stuff like that. It, you just don't need it. It's gonna slow you down and you wanna be quick. That's what this is all about. So make sure you color code it as well and use it when you just need it. For example, this is how I do it. I always put my buses to the right of all the channels that I used. So here in this example, I have my leads and I know that these few channels to the left of my black lead channel are probably gonna be routed to my leads. Yes, so you can see until here, this is leads. So I know when I wanna change something, where it is, it's gonna speed me up because I'm not looking for my channels. I know where they are. 
Now the next big tip is don't crash your CPU, please. Your CPU is your best friend when it's working well, and it's your worst enemy when it's working against you. So there's a couple of ways in FL Studio that we can change FL Studio itself to work better with our CPU that we have and don't mess up our entire workflow because our CPU is lagging. Now the easiest thing that you can do is go over to tools, click on macros and go to switch smart disable for all plugins. This just does it so that all the plugins that you're using that aren't currently playing are disabled and the CPU usage from the plugins that are being played is being focused more on those plugins and the plugins that aren't playing are kind of like disabled. That's exactly what it says in the option, right? Another cool thing to do to reduce your CPU usage is use your time base in a way that's effective. For example, we can go to options, project general settings, and here we have a time base setting. The higher the setting is, the more difficult your CPU will have of a life. If you set it very low, it's probably gonna do better and you're not gonna struggle as much. It will also decrease the quality of your track, but most of the time it's not noticeable and make sure that when you're rendering, you set it back up to whatever you had before. Now, the last thing is patch presets. This could be an entire video for its own, but I will try to do my best to explain it very quickly. Let's assume I'm working on this base. Let me show you. And as you can see in the FL Studio project, it's comprised of these three sounds. The first sound being a, a sub, I'm guessing. Yes. The second one being crunchy. And the third one being a side signal. Very wide, right? And I want to take all of these because I made these layers and I'm like, hey, the sound is really cool. But now I want to have it in a preset. The way you would do this is load in three presets, but you can actually do it in one and one click with all the post-processing with patch. Now, if you want to do this yourself, the first thing that you're going to need is Patcher itself. Then you got to somehow get the Serum instances into Patcher. I will do this very quickly. Bear with me. So now that we have all the presets in here, we still don't get the right sound. Because we don't have any of the post-processing. So let's get that in. Let's go to the channel of the Serum instance which has post-processing and we can just do save as, drag and drop onto Patcher. Use the dirt as well. And then do the same thing with Sausage Fatner. Bam. Go back to our Patcher and connect them to whichever Serum preset we had with these effects. So in my case, it was this one. So you can just do this, disconnect that one. Hey, what are you doing here? This one connect them just the same way how we had them in the channel, like that, and then connect them to the outs. So now you can think of it as serum, effects, output. Now let's do the same thing for number eight. And now the only thing that we need to worry about is the levels. So let's check our base levels here. First one was a little bit up. Second one was halfway down. Third one was also even a little bit more down. Now the last thing that we need to do is, in this case I have a bus, and on the bus itself I also have some processing. So we also got to take this, do bam, boom, bam, and now we just got to connect all of these as if they were a bus, right? So these are individual channels, and from here on now we basically have our bus stuff, so we can route them like that, route them to the output, and now we have a patch preset which sounds like all of these layers combined. Check this out. Perfect. And now you can just do save preset, save it as whatever. And now if you load up a new patch preset in whatever new project you have, you can go into your presets and load that one up. And you will immediately have that sound without all the work of all the plugins and all the stuff that will make you super fast. Now you have to make the presets themselves, but once you have them, they're golden, trust me. Do make them and they will speed you up immensely. That's gonna do it for today. I hope you've learned something and I hope this will make you super, super quick. It's also kind of an insight on how I am so quick and it's just about perfecting those tips and skills and becoming a lightning producer in FL Studio. Now, if you've liked the video, make sure you sub, make sure you like the video, leave a comment with your own tips and tricks, and maybe there's gonna be a volume two. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.